Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family, Patreon family, Hearts Home, E Arts family. Hello, everyone. We are family. Our family. Do you believe animals have souls? We were talking about this, and I want to go in a little bit uh, deeper depth uh, right now. And yeah, to, to me and to so many people, most people, in fact, when you scroll down, say, yes, of course, the animals have souls. Each one of them has a unique personality. Uh, they obviously have emotions. They have thought. They are simply uh, operating different vehicles than we are operating our bodies are different. If we, if we didn't have a mouth, we wouldn't be communicating like we are. If, if we had maybe two fingers instead of, you know, five, we wouldn't be building things the way we are. If, if we had paws, obviously, we wouldn't be do- <laughs> probably talking on the computer like we are. You know, and I want to weigh in with this a little bit myself, but um, do animals have souls? My belief system, not only do they have souls, animals decide, animals decide if you are going to go to a good place or not such a good place. This is just my belief system. I'm sure everyone has their own, but I think it's, um, they're sent here to be guardians. They're sent here to be angels. They're sent here to be partners. And I don't think they're vindictive at all. However, if if people are really not nice to animals, I do believe there's karmic repercussion. I absolutely believe 100% there's karmic repercussion. These babies cannot speak up for themselves. They can they can do things to try to to try to protect themselves, but that's all they can do. So I I think it's even they're more than a soul. You know, they're here to help us grow. They give of themselves and you know, a lot of them don't live the best lives and, and that's so unfortunate. And when I look at society and I see where is the animal population and how are the majority of animals treated, um, that kind of, to me, that gauges humankind, like where are we at? And we definitely have a long way to go because all of our shelters are cram packed full um, there's so many dogs out on the streets, you know, eating out of dumpsters. You know, there can be a ho- homeless person with a dog and they love that dog so much they'll give that dog half of their meal and this dog and this homeless person really love each other and I think that's absolutely beautiful. Maybe the dog doesn't have the best sleeping quarters or the best food, but what's what's important? It's the love. It's the love shared between the two. So, I see them not only as having souls, but giving us the ability for soul expansion. And I think, again, we have to, you know, go a little deeper and say, well, well, what is really the soul? What are you calling the soul? Is Are you talking about the consciousness itself? Uh, and ultimately, we are consciousness that has multiple experiences uh in most cases, we experience ultimately all all the different possibilities throughout our eternal existence because, again, we are, think of it as an ocean. Each one of us can be viewed as while we're here embodied. It's almost like we're a drop of rain that's, that's dropped from the cloud. It itself has the same characteristics as the ocean. It's making its way back to the ocean. When it drops into the ocean, it doesn't disappear. It just becomes part of the ocean. And ultimately, you know, we are consciousness. Everything is consciousness. This is all an ocean of consciousness. The so-called visible manifest universe itself is a playground and a learning ground for consciousness to explore. And, and that's really the bottom line. So it's not that, and this is something that was in another post today that I just had to respond to um, as there were a couple of different scientists that were uh, talking about their papers and, you know, their views. And one of the, one of the scientists, the view was, uh, again, that human consciousness arises in the brain as is is dependent on the brain 
and has to do with uh, the magnetic fields coming from the earth uh, interacting with the brain itself and to me that's just ridiculous uh, beyond ridiculous because we always are we're just not always human and in fact if you as you go deeper into meditation you will realize you're not always you the you in some ways is an illusion um, and this is this is something that takes uh, maybe even lifetimes to to realize or it, for many individuals it might not take long at all to realize we are having this temporary human experience many of us have had uh i would say i would venture to say most of us have had experiences in the animal kingdom as there is the, there's kind of a ladder of consciousness if you want to call it that yet that ladder just doesn't go one way and and that's something else with like another post uh that i saw out there one person had said well we're certainly not going to take a step backward and become a a dog or a, a cat a lion a, a buffalo a, an elephant or, or a whale and go backwards in on the evolutionary track once we become human and and that's not really what's out there in uh, the Sanatana Dharma and some of the other traditions, if you look at it closely, and we don't, I wouldn't even call that taking a step backwards because it's just simply uh, jumping into a different type of vehicle. It's like if you're driving all the time a Chevy truck and then all of a sudden you decide you want to ride a four wheeler for fun. Or you might want to, you know, ride an actual bicycle, which is technologically not as advanced, but hey, it's fun and it's exercise and it's a different experience. And then you might want to go into a plane or a rocket ship or a boat. They're all different vehicles. They're all different experiences. In some ways, you could say one's maybe technologically a little bit more advanced than another, but it's just a different perspective and it's just a different vehicle. Bodies are vehicles for consciousness, and consciousness can go and advance up to a very high state and then come and, and take what would be perceived as maybe a not as uh, advanced state, not as um, evolved state, but again, it's just a matter of perspective because in some ways, obviously, our animals are, are much better better than us at certain things like feeling the oneness of all things mm -hmm. you know i i look at things like um i think being a human can be very very challenging i really feel like animals and insects uh, gosh it's it's hard hard to say but i feel like they have a better understanding of their purpose even a piece of fruit has a better understanding of their purpose than many humans once we reach this inside of this vessel it seems like there's so many questions and people are always trying to figure out what is my purpose what is my purpose and if you find your purpose that definitely gives you some direction it definitely gives you some some type of momentum but i look at all things around us they're markers and arrows to assist us in finding our purpose and and vice versa so we all reflect off of one another you know as far as people go animals insects plants you know you get back what you put out there so some sometimes that cannot be a very pleasant thing you know but in in a certain lifetime or at a certain point in your life, maybe you reflected out some really not so nice stuff and then you have some not so nice stuff coming back at you. And these are all things just to sit and think about and, and like how can we enrich our experience? How can we enrich the time that we are here? Because it's a very sacred time. It's a very special time. And, and I want to touch on the animals things as far as somebody mentioning, you know, you don't take a step back and become a dog. Ha, have you guys ever had a pet that just was really super close to you that was unlike any other pet? Just, I mean, really having that super bond between you two. And it might even be something as small as a mouse 
a guinea pig, um, something, you know, it might be a horse, it might be a dog, but you have this heart connection with this animal. We do have relatives that want to come back in a 3D form and help us and assist us in another way. And so many times that is in the form of a pet of, of some kind and giving us that bonding and giving us that ability to grow and to learn and to love. I mean, it's something that uh, it's such a blessed experience. And in this time, in this place we're in now, too many people are just at work and they're simply getting by and they don't really have time to sit and absorb it and experience it and feel it let alone understand it but it's definitely a time in our lives that we're all here together to learn from one another and the closer we all get to learning that and understanding that boy i mean it's just going to make a huge difference consciousness is going to go through the roof when we figure that out one of the things that you get from reading all the uh, stories in the vast library of the different uh, hindu holy books is that you'll find time and time again very advanced beings, not necessarily even beings like uh, on Mahadevas, such as Shiva or Vishnu or Lakshmi, Parvati, but even other types of beings, different classifications that sometimes are, are labeled uh, celestials. Yeah, they'll call them the celestials, um, meaning that these are beings that are not terrestrial <laughs> and advanced um, that will take incarnations into other beings and yes um, you will see time and time again uh, that one of the higher level beings will turn into an animal or or take over the consciousness uh, of an animal uh, to learn uh, to to give a lesson to a particular human in many cases because again you know everything in these books is all about humans because that's what we are and that's what it's written for is you having your human experience right now uh, and again when you look at the animal realm it is fascinating to note that many of the animals that we see here um, they are kin in so many ways with different extraterrestrials that are far more advanced than homo sapiens so you know beings that are like lion human hybrids or appear to be lion human hybrids from lyra for instance way more advanced than your average homo sapiens and yet they they are absolutely um of that genetic disposition and so many of them have given us representations of themselves in in many ways with the uh animals on this planet mm -hmm. right you know i mean when it comes to our our vessel you know we're going to see things through the lens of that vessel and that's why these stories are so helpful it's through the human lens and it gives us the opportunity to have aha moments and and find ourselves and i gotta say one of my favorite things in astrology is helping people find themselves because that's that's it, it was a huge gift for me to to have my chart read and it, it really it, it it was something that gave me so many aha moments and gave me so much understanding and talk about just getting my feet put to the ground it's like thank you thank you thank you thank you for giving me that understanding because I'm not one who can just find it. There's people out there. I mean, they got this. They know how to do this. They have this 3D realm. They have it down. They they know which steps to take, which steps not to take. But I wasn't one of those people. I was more like a, a, a kind of a, a wild animal spiraling out of control. Like, what do I do? What do I do? And astrology helped grab my, grab my feet and put them to the ground and, and say, here, here's what you do. So that was very, very, very useful. But, you know, when it comes to pets and when it comes to fruit, and I, I feel like I can share this on, on this video. I've shared it a couple of times before, but with my experiences through uh, a, a awakening at one point, and I, some people are going to laugh, and that's fine, that's fine. At one point, and during my awakening, I, I was a piece of fruit, 
and I was on a tree. And this was not me channeling it. I was this fruit on a tree. So I was in a completely different environment, a completely different body. And I knew my purpose and I knew my purpose was going to be to help consciousness experience itself and you know the one thought that I had was I want to be prayed over I I want to be prayed over before I'm used before I'm eaten you know and some people might really laugh and make fun of that and that's fine but it was so expansive to me I mean just to be that different entity for a single moment and have that experience for my lifetime to share with other people that yes when you're in a different body you are you but you're gonna have different um, ideals as far as what your purpose is so that's why I think humans are the most difficult thing to be is because we can really spin out of control we have a lot more thoughts going on but I think that's for expansion also yeah you know thoughts going on uh in our minds but yet so do so do so many other beings and when we think about where we're at as humans with such limited dna actually turned on in these particular vehicles uh, so much of what we experience is from the perspective of kind of being in a dark room and we really are feeling around a lot more than we would in other ages or in times past when we've been in uh, much more advanced vehicles and still having a lot clearer understanding you know even the concept of what am i like when you talk about uh, a person you're not really just talking about one entity and this is part of the misunderstanding of what we really are because we are a consortium and the control system understands this this is why they have put people uh, that they label as schizophrenic uh, in isolation and and don't want them interacting with society because uh, what we are are a group of beings a group of conscious entities that's having a human experience so it's not even that there's really one being having this conscious experience as a human it's actually a group a collective and have you ever fought with yourself have you ever felt like you know you're more than one person and sometimes you're arguing with yourself well there's reasons for that there there are reasons for that um I was debating whether to include this, but I think I will because, you know, we'll include this in with this. And this is um, a little diagram showing Hun, Shen, Po, Ji, and Yi, all equaling spirit. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is uh, the Taoist point of view on what makes up a person. So you have the mind, the the Shen, uh, you have the Hun. Here it's being labeled the other real soul. Ji is the willpower, Yi is the intellect, Po is the corporeal soul. And you could get into, uh, I have three different articles here um, that talk about these beings. In, in, In some interpretations, the Hun are viewed almost like uh, guardian angels where the po are viewed almost like animalistic earthy uh, qualities that are in our bodies typically typically residing within us working with us and yet they are a part of us for this just for this incarnation although sometimes the, the hun will come with us for multiple incarnations where the po Uh, have also been correlated as uh, the seven deadly sins in so many ways. There's seven uh, Po spirits, there's three Hun spirits, and you have one Shen or one mind, so to speak. It's interesting to see this. Now, you know, again, the Hun and the Po can also kind of be looked at 
as uh, the devil on one shoulder in some ways and and the uh, angel on the other shoulder in some ways. And one of the things that's interesting about the Hun is uh, they are, the three Hun reside in the liver. And when we use pharmaceuticals and alcohol and stuff, we could literally drive them out of our body and away from us. In which case, what's going to dominate us? It's going to be the more animalistic side, the Po side. So, you know, that is one of the reasons why, you know, they push a drunken, drugged up society because it's automatically going to lower our frequencies and also leave us, um, you know, open to being taken over by by darker energies. So, you know, it's fascinating to see this because these these five points here make up a pentagram with Shen again at the top or the mind or, you know, the higher uh, self, the intellect. And you can, again, see why uh, the dark side would inverse this and, and put the point down, again, valuing uh, the sensual side of things, the selfish side, the egotistical side. And yet you can also look at this as being part of the five element system for those that are familiar with uh, Chinese medicine and um, traditional Chinese medicine and have done some studies there as well. It's, it's all about balance. It's all about balance. And, and again, each of these are associated as different aspects of consciousness and it's just a fascinating perspective from uh, the Chinese uh, tradition and the Taoist tradition. So let's look at which one over here. So the Zhi is the will. This, this is linked to the energetic kidneys, usually translated as will or volition. It represents our determination and drive. And, you know, again, the kidneys is where our original... Jing. Jing is uh, that life force. It's the chi that's given to us by our parents. It resides in the kidneys. Uh, and that is a finite uh, amount. So we're given a certain amount of Jing or a certain amount of uh, heavier, denser chi, which is what supports the physical body. It's from our parents and it's stored in the kidneys. Now, again, uh, kidneys, water element, emotions, and the emotion associated uh, with this would be uh, fear as far as what would drive out um, that that particular frequency or, or drive downwards that frequency. It's fear uh, again, and this is why the system uh, is always keeping us in, in fear. So we need uh, determination, we need strength, we need rootedness, we need balance. And again, this is part of how we're always kept off balance in this, in this world. And when you look at the person, we are not just one consciousness. And I think that's so important to, to get across. We're a collective, and we can tap into past lives as well. Here, the Hun represents the other real soul associated with the liver. It's considered responsible for our ability to plan, make decisions, engage in long-term projects. Character for the Hun combines the radical for ghost or spirit with the radical for cloud. This composition symbolizes the other real nature of the soul as something intangible, something that moves like a cloud. The character also captures the idea that the Hun leaves the body during sleep and is connected to the realm of dreams. When the Hun is in balance, it contributes to a sense of purpose, creativity, and direction in life. Imbalances, however, can result in issues such as frustration, indecisiveness, and or a lack of vision. Um, Again, with the G, it manifests as a strong sense of purpose, resilience, the ability to apply measured effort. Imbalance can lead to issues such as depletion, lack of motivation, or fearfulness. And then when we talk about the Shen, the spirit, it's, it's translated as spirit or mind associated with the heart. Considered the most closely connected to the consciousness and awareness, the character for Shen combines the concepts of a divine altar or heaven reaching downward 
This reflects the divine essence within a person, emphasizing the connection between the spiritual and human realms. The character conveys the idea that the spirit resides within shaping consciousness, awareness, and the higher aspects of the mind. A balanced Shen results in mental clarity, emotional stability, strong sense of purpose. Disturbances to the Shen can manifest as anxiety, restlessness, or even more severe mental health issues. The Yi is the intellect associated with the spleen, often translated as intention or thought, represents our capacity for focused thinking, intentionality, and mindfulness. Yi consists of the radicals for heart and sound, while also implying idea. This character visually links intention and thought with the heart, suggesting there's no clear-cut separation between heart and mind. In Chinese medicine, a balanced yi contributes to mental clarity and the ability to concentrate. When the yi is imbalanced, it might uh, manifest as excessive worry, overthinking, or making uh, difficulty making decisions. When you think about the spleen, again, uh, it, it purifies the blood. And this is, again, why our world is so toxic, because what are they doing? They're, they're, they're making our thoughts fuzzy. They're making... Uh, things difficult for us to see clearly. There is a direct correlation between how healthy the body is and how clear the thoughts are. Now, the Po, the corporeal soul, it's, it's associated with the lungs, represents the corporeal soul, or the animalistic aspect of human nature, closely tied to the physical body and its instincts, desires, and survival mechanisms. It combines the same radical for ghost or spirit as the Hun with the radical for white. The character visually suggests the corporeal nature of the soul so associated with the physical body. The addition of white implies the brightness or luminosity, highlighting the vitality and essence of the corporeal soul within the human form. In Taoist philosophy, the Po is believed to disperse upon death, returning to the earth. Balancing the Po involves harmonizing our physical and emotional needs with our spiritual aspirations. An imbalance of the Po may manifest as issues related to the body, such as chronic illness, overindulgence, insensory pleasures, excess grief, or breathing troubles. Fascinating that in, in the case of Zeke, um, the Po did not leave his body until about a month after he was actually passed and buried. Uh, and Cindy could actually see the energy come and disassociate from him uh, as his spirit was gone immediately when he started to pass on. When he was stricken, um, I sensed that I shouldn't send him energy to prolong his life because it was time for him to go. And I had done that before with a cat um that i hadn't loved and i actually i think i ended up torturing it because it was its time to go and i was sending it life force energy and it was hanging on and it hung on for a long time but it wasn't it wasn't wanting to hang on and so i i sensed i tried to search and sense really quickly you know whether zeke was to be could be brought back um or if I should let him go and immediately got that it was to let him go and so quickly made that uh, hard decision to help him translate and so I called on the guides I called on Lakshmi and and the mothers to help him translate and we did the mantras and and we're helping the visualization of him uh, separating from the body which he did and so his what we would call his spirit, so to speak, his consciousness separated from the body, his. But the Po, this was the amazing part to me after the fact and, and showed me just how much the Taoists really understand things. The Po left the body almost a full month later. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I noticed that with um, Sassy, and that was, even though it was a very very sad experience it was a, a, a learning experience to see how things work you know immediately after death and then ongoing but I noticed Sassy was over playing in an area of the yard and when I looked to see she she was playing with these different little elementals that were actually coming from where where we had buried Zeke 
and then I told Mike about it and I I mean I understand this but I'm not studied in it so when I told Mike Mike knew right away oh my gosh that's the Poe so this is how we put things together is through working with each other and um, having an understanding one with a book and one with just uh, this this sensing thing that I do um, you know I've had pets that have asked me to not intervene and not uh, work on them and please do not prolong them because they're ready to go and they're ready to go and come and join me in another way another shape another form so it is about learning to to listen and yes the life force energy is something that's so very real and you you build it you learn how to use it and then you have to there's like um this energy that you really need to understand when you are working on people or individuals because no i mean if an animal wants to go you you don't want to be the one saying no i want you to stay because that's kind of your selfish nature when the animal is ready to go and and this is really sad but a lot of people are faced with having to put their their you know a very dear friend down and i say friends because these animals are like friends they are like family so to to them it doesn't feel any different but if the animal is suffering and they're no longer eating they're no longer drinking and people want to know well what should i do listen listen to your heart you know what is that animal saying and trust that you are getting the right information because they are sending signals to you as far as let me let me rest release me no i want to stay you know so these are all the things we we learn to listen to when you get really quiet in the mind in the spirit in the soul you start to hear these things and and, and then they do become louder and they become more outlined and clarified which makes these things a lot easier when you start to listen to energy it can be a little bit bumpy you know it can be a little bit like um, puppies playing together a little sloppy a little misread a, a little um, not so easy to verify things at first just kind of messy you know just like toddlers trying to eat with a spoon you just, it's a little messy but you do it more and you learn more and you feel more. And once you do get a positive signature that's like, hey, I know what that energy signature is, you mark it and, and you remember it. But that's that's kind of how, how we do things, I think. At least, at least it's how I do things. Yeah, and what Cindy was saying too, it's important to understand that there's different terms used in different traditions. So... You know what, what they call the Po over here in, in Taoist philosophy and in uh, more Western minds, we might view them as elemental beings because that's what they are. They're elemental beings. And the reality is that souls typically will go along a certain route and simply being an elemental being taking care of of a flower or a plant is one of the things that typically the soul will do before progressing on up throughout the animal kingdom and taking on more and more complicated um, forms of, of vehicles uh, to experience life from. So there is a progression of consciousness that's also clearly outlined in um, the Hindu scriptures, how consciousness itself kind of climbs this ladder of uh, complication and um, evolution at the same time going up to higher and higher states but consciousness can also take a sidestep and you know you can send back a portion of your consciousness to say be by the side of a best friend a loved one as as a pet um, or you know simply as an animal a portion and this is what many of the big uh, big beings do and they can send a fractal of themselves into the world to literally manifest as a ascended master uh, to help humanity and to help uh, raise consciousness when you when you look to say Yeshua for instance 
let's look at, at Yeshua. You know, he's coming from a plane of existence that's higher than the earth here in a dark age. Absolutely. So, you know, would you say he's going backwards on the evolutionary ladder to come into earth at that time period? You, you could view that just like taking a uh, incarnation as an animal at the same time. He's already moved well beyond where he needs to be here. He doesn't need to be here. He, he's doing that for others. And it's the same thing with many other uh, ascended masters. They come back in order to help others and to teach and to guide. And it's just a, it's just a choice. Whether we're talking about um, beings also like Babaji or, or so many other beautiful benevolent souls that have incarnated to guide us along the way. Uh, they make that conscious choice to come back and and to do that. Now, is that all of their energy? Um, no, no. Again, it, and you're not all of your energy, as as I know, because I've had glimpses that my higher self is having another incarnation uh, over. I think it's probably in Indonesia or the Philippines, as I've had visions of that, and I've actually seen myself waking up and getting out of bed and looking in the mirror and it's like well wait a minute i'm not an asian man that's in his early 30s hmm okay and and having prolonged uh, experiences in that area living on an island somewhere hmm you know very curious but then again this is part of that exploration of consciousness we're we're not as simple as what's given to us in the Abrahamic tradition, per se, where you're simply created to serve the quote-unquote Lord, and that's it. No, no, no. You know, your consciousness has always been. It's always been since ever, because you're part of the one. You're part of source. You are part of source. You are, in fact, a fractal of source. Now, you're an individuated fractal at this point in time, and you're on your path, having your own creative journey. You're going to experience reality through so many different lenses, and it depends on the fractal. Some fractals will go back and merge back with the one uh, consciousness uh, relatively quickly. Others will, will go and explore indefinitely. Yes, 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 and yes. Um, I think when at, at a time in my life where I was just really busy and I was not remembering who I was at all, it, it came to me that some people are afraid that you just blow out like a candle. Now, there's a piece of me that always knew that that was impossible but at that time, I was unable to see what happens after after the flame is no longer. I just couldn't see, and it bothered me, but I knew that there was something there. And it only took, took for me to go back to my own childhood, and it took for me to really clean up my own life because I was not eating right. I was not doing any of the things to, um, to really kind of get that, energy looked at I was just busy and I was blind and I was raising kids and and so when when you're in that state and you're just so busy surviving you can't really see and it puts you I think it puts people in a state of fear it's like ah you know what's going to happen to me and also with people's first Saturn return that's when when people start thinking about their um their mortality like Oh my gosh, I, I'm gonna die. Here I am. I'm in this flesh. I'm 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 gonna die. What am I gonna do with myself? And that's right around I think that's at the age of, of twenty eight, and then there's the second Saturn return. And we're very, very blessed to be able to make that because those are the wisdom years. I feel those are the years where we grow and we understand and we start really making our life matter. And it, you know, if you're someone who gets to be over the age of 50, oh my gosh, you are so, so, so blessed and you have so much to offer society. And what I see are a lot of really sad things happening to our elders 
um, especially during the plague upon the land, the way that they were treated and how they had to pass alone. And yes, they were okay after they passed, but still, it's a very vulnerable time in life when you know that you're at the end of your life and you're still not sure what is on the other side. And, and I feel extremely blessed to be able to have hovered out, outside of my body and actually viewed source um, the way I view source and know and understand that with each breath, source is pumping out, you know, a universe worth of information uh, to and from. And source is very uh, happy, so happy and blessed to be able to share of itself with you so you can have all of these experiences too absolutely so i do uh encourage people if you're curious you know delve deeper into the taoist way um as as you know taoism is something that's been part of my life going back to being a, a teenager and always found that there was so much wisdom there We've done a video in the past where we went through the entirety of the Tao Te Ching. And, you know, that is available, I think, on EE Arts, if I remember right. And it should be up on Patreon, too. Um, and, you know, there's, there's just so much wisdom in there. Ultimately, we are formless consciousness. That's the thing to realize. We, we, we don't ultimately necessarily... Um, Let's put it this way. We, we have a body, but we're not the body. And we have a brain, but we're not limited to the brain. The consciousness is not limited to the brain. And then we're not even the mind itself. We're, we're not even the mind itself. We, we are the observer watching all these things unfold that we perceive that they are happening uh, to us, but in reality, we're, we're watching this uh, great drama unfold, this play of consciousness with the created manifested universe that was created by consciousness, for consciousness. And that is really, you know, the beautiful part of this, because we already are eternal. We, we cannot be uh, destroyed. And again, that's given, you know, not just in, in uh, the Sanatana Dharma, but in also the mystery traditions as well in the West uh, that had to be remain hidden. Otherwise, you, know, you could have been boiled alive or drawn and quartered or all sorts of things, anything that took power away from the power structure. But again, we have nothing to truly fear because whatever is done to the body, we still are there. I know we're not the body, we're not we're not the mind, but we always are. Absolutely. Look forward to questions, comments. Much love, source bless. Namaste. Namaste.